Last week, I said that there are three types of participial constructions, and we talked about the three types. The first one is simply changing the main verb to ing. The second type is changing the main verb to ing, but sometimes the main verb is a B verb. And if it's a B verb, then you can actually omit the word being from the beginning of the sentence. And the third type was the same as the first and second types, but you add a subordinate conjunction to the front to clarify the relationship between the two sentences. There's one more thing related to participial constructions that we didn't cover last week. It happens very frequently in English, and I'll show you a lot of examples later. But this is considered an advanced concept because if you don't know what is happening, it looks like the writer has completely given up on grammar. It looks like the writer is just writing whatever. But in fact, it does follow a rule. And because it, it looks like it is so flexible, it appears a lot in English. Now, um, because it is so free, it's there's so many possibilities, there aren't a lot of practice questions to do. So your handout does not include questions related to this, but you should know what's going on. And these are called absolute phrases. In Chinese, we call this 独立分子子句. No, 独立分子构句. So when we were talking last week about participial constructions, the sentences had to have the same subject. But for absolute phrases, the subject can be different. So last week we specified the subject was the same, but this week, look at this. Sentence one plus sentence two. You put them together, you get a new sentence. And the only two things that have changed, first of all, uh, this period has become a comma. And the first verb has become a present participle. Everything else is the same. This means you can actually connect and combine any two complete sentences as long as there is some kind of relationship between them. And last week I also showed you that by using this kind of grammar, you can build a relationship between these two sentences. So, um, somebody give me a verb. Run. We did that last week. Give me something new. We also did dance last week. Were you here last week? OK, yeah, give me something new. Sorry, jump. Is that right? All right, let's use jump and uh, give me another verb because we are doing two sentences. Sleep. All right, great. Don't do that. So the first verb was jump. The second verb was sleep. But because of the logic of the story, I, you, I flipped them around. So first sentence, Maria slept late that day. Complete sentence, right? Subject, 
verb, and then everything else because sleep does not take an object. Second sentence, Garrett, subject, jumped, verb, and then everything else from the airplane alone. So when you put these two together, Maria, uh, and because the first one happens before the second one, so we use have to tell the reader that this is the first thing. Maria having slept late that day, Garrett jumped from the airplane alone. So when you put these two sentences together, it tells a story. It says that originally they planned to jump from the airplane together. But because Maria overslept, Garrett did it alone. Right, so this example follows the formula exactly. Two different complete sentences. When you put them together, the first verb takes an ing form. And the second sentence is exactly the same. They are connected by a comma. Now, last week we also mentioned that this part of the sentence does not have to come in front. You can put it in the middle. You can put it at the end. As long as you separate it from the other part using commas. So let's take a look at some real world examples. I added this to the Moodle page um, here. Absolute phrases examples. And that opens up this page. Uh, it first gives you a definition. The definition is very difficult. Um, let's look at the examples. You will notice that these examples combine everything we have talked about these past two weeks. Here. The complete sentence is the storks circled high above us. Storks are a kind of bird. And then the incomplete part is their slender bodies sleek and black against the orange sky. Against here means compared to. Sleek means like uh, shining and smooth. Slender means thin. Now you're thinking, hang on. Where's the verb? There's no verb in this sentence or in this part of the sentence. The verb is being. Their slender bodies are here. And therefore it has been omitted. So you can put the incomplete part at the front. You can put the incomplete part at the back. You can put the incomplete part in the middle. And this sentence adds detail, adds description to the idea that some birds are flying overhead. What kind of birds? How, what do they look like? What are the colors? This sentence uses an absolute phrase to give us all of these details. Here are some more examples. There was no bus in sight, and Julian, his hands still jammed in his pockets, and his head thrust forward, scowled down the empty street. To scowl means to frown, to make an angry face. Now again, you're thinking, there is no ing verb. Teacher, you said the verb has to be ing. It's true, it's here. Being jammed. And being thrust. So this sentence tells us, that Julian is waiting for the bus and he's angry. And the middle part describes what he's doing. His hands are in his pockets. His head is looking forward, uh, looking for a bus. And like using this grammar means that you don't have to, to uh, separate these ideas into two different sentences. You can show that these things are happening at the same time. Next one. Silently, they ambled down 10th Street until they reached a stone bench that jutted from the sidewalk near the curb. OK, I don't know why this is part of the example. Next one. They stopped there and sat down, their backs to the eyes of the two men in white smocks who were watching them. Again, the B verb is here, being to. Their backs were to, which means that they were facing away from. 
the man stood laughing, his weapons at his hips. So this is a clear example, right? Subject one, verb one, everything else. Subject two, the verb is a be verb omitted, and then everything else. So from this sentence, the main action is he's laughing, but the added important information is that he still has weapons on his body. Uh, and there are many more examples. Uh, here's one using the have verb, right? Our car having developed engine trouble, we stop for the night at a roadside rest area. So having tells us that this first part happens first, then they stopped. We decided to have our picnic, the weather being warm and clear. So like two sentences in a row using the same grammar, you can see how common it is. Uh, and then you have even more examples here. Here's a really cool complicated example. Roy circles the bases like a Mississippi steamboat, lights lit, flags fluttering, whistle banging, coming round the bend. Um, so the lights are lit, the B verb is omitted, the flags are fluttering, the whistle is banging. Uh, and it, so it gives us three different absolute phrases within the main sentence. Here's one from Harry Potter. Harry froze, his cut finger slipping on the jagged edge of the mirror again. So there are many, many more examples on this page. If you need uh, more practice recognizing this grammar, if you need more practice telling exactly how it works, uh, you can click on this link on the Moodle page here. OK, now today the main event is. If I rem remember correctly, it should be questions. Direct questions. Now you might be thinking we all know how to write a question. If that's true, why do people keep making mistakes? So let's talk about this. There are three main ways to write a direct question in English. In fact, we talked about this uh, in the introduction week when we were looking at syntax. Uh, every question, well not every, the first two kinds of questions involve moving a word around. To ask a question in English, you have to at least move the first verb in the uh, first word in the verb phrase. So for example, this sentence, those guys should leave. The there are two words in the verb phrase, should and leave. To ask a question, to ask a yes or no question. You should move the first word in the verb phrase to the front of the sentence. So it looks like this. Should those guys leave? Nothing else changes. You're only moving one word. Um, let's see if we have more examples. Oh no, that's it. That's the only example we have. Um, so that you can turn any sentence into a question, right? Give me another verb quickly. We used that before. Another one. Play. Thank you. Harmonica coaching. Perfectly fine sentence. Subject, Joanna, play, verb, harmonica, object, and everything else. Now, if you want to turn this into a yes or no question, you should move the first word in the verb phrase. But wait, 
there's only one verb in this verb phrase. If you move this word, there's no more verb. What do you do? You have to add an auxiliary verb. Now, this is not only an auxiliary verb, it also expresses past tense. So you don't need to say that it's the past tense again. Right, this word is a verb and past tense. This word is past tense. This word is a verb. Not only did we move something to the front, that word also carried the past tense to the front. So this is a yes or no question. Um, you can do the same thing with uh, future tense, but in future tense, you will always have the first word. So for example, Same sentence, future tense. Now the verb phrase has two words. You can therefore move one word to the front to make a yes or no question. Again, this word means future tense, so you don't need to use this word. You don't need to change this word to tell the reader it happens in the future. The reader already knows. So of course, the same for the present tense, right? Uh, turns out this is Joanna's business. She will pay, play the harmonica at birthday parties for a small fee. You have to pay her. Uh, so present tense, this, uh, again, the verb, there's only one word. You need to add a word. It is does. And therefore, the play remains uh, in its original state. Okay. Um, questions about this first kind of question? So this is how you do a yes or no question. But sometimes you're not uh, you you're you're asking a question that you kind of already know the answer to, but you want to confirm. So in these examples, the question version is always we don't know whether Joanna played, will play, or does play her harmonica at birthday parties. But what if you already know? You can ask what's called a tag question. And this is you add a question at the end. Right means yes. So if this is your question, that means you think Joanna will do this. You just want to make sure. Um, another way to do this is to ask in the negative. This is future tense, so this is also future tense. Sometimes you will see people uh, just add a yes or a no. That also works. It's uh, this is actually from I guess we can call this immigrant English, like people who learn English as a second or third language in other, especially European languages, they can add yes or no to the end. So often uh, these people when learning English would do the same thing. So like it's correct, but it's less common to simply add a yes or no at the end. But 
sometimes people will add the no the negative part to the main sentence. OK, so these examples are all you think Joanna will, but you're not sure. But what if you think Joanna won't? And you're not sure. Again, the main sentence is a statement. And then you add the question. Now, how do you answer this question? I should do it like this. So. If she. Uh, we, let's confirm. You think she won't. If she really won't, you, if you're right. The answer is no. She will like your the question. The assumption is wrong. Uh, the answer technically is yes, but if you say yes, people will think maybe you're saying no. Uh, so the best way to say this is. She will actually, and this can avoid a lot of confusion. But if you simply say no, people will know that you are confirming the original negation. Uh, OK, so do you have questions about these tag questions? All right, the last one is the. Uh, who, what, when, where, why, how questions. So as we saw in the syntax handout, if you're asking who, what, when, where, why, how, you have to move two words. So for example, uh, also which, so I guess that's six W's. For example, Radha can speak which languages is the original order of this sentence. The answer is like um, uh, five languages or many languages, right? You, you can replace the word which with another word. So the first thing to do is to move the first word in the verb phrase. In this case, the verb phrase has two words, can speak. So just like a yes or no question, you move the first word to the front. So it looks like this. Can Radha speak which languages? Up to this point, this looks exactly the same as a yes or no question. But if you begin by asking uh, like something that belongs later in the sentence, like which, you also need to move this word to the very front. So there are two movements. Oh, OK, so it's asking which languages. So uh, you can replace this whole noun phrase with a language like French. Right, so the whole thing is moved over. Which languages can Radha speak is the correct way to make this question. Do we have another example? Yes. They will talk about what? So the first thing to do will talk two words. You can move the first one to the front. So it becomes will they talk about what? But you're asking this. So the second movement is to move what you're asking about to the front. So it looks like this. What will they talk about? So after you move something, this is empty. There's nothing here. This is empty. Don't add anything here. Some people feel like that doesn't feel right. You can end a sentence with about. And then they will add something at the end. No, there is already something there. You just moved it. The space is not open. It's simply. Uh, there's like a trace. That's what the T stands for, a trace. Um, and so you can't put anything new here. Um, so that's two examples. Um, and um, the, the really hard one here is how. 
how can mean many things, right? Who means person? What means thing? Where is a place? Uh, why is a reason? When is a time? But how? How has two meanings? First meaning is in what way? Uh, using what way? The second meaning is to what degree or you know how serious, how intense, how strong. So when you see a question that begins with how, uh, it could mean these two things. Uh, and in what way sometimes will include an adjective. So the most common one is, how are you doing? And the answer is, there's a standard answer. When someone asks you, how are you doing? What's the answer? How are you doing? I'm fine. Or you can say, I'm good. And then you're supposed to say you. In this case, fine and good are both adjectives, and that's why the question is how. Or like, uh, how do you feel? Same thing. I feel good, or I feel okay. Um, in my film class, the midterm exam question is. How does the short film make you feel? There are two ways to understand this question, but only one way is correct. Some people think this means in what way? So what tools does the film use to make you feel something? But that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking what feelings does the short film give you? Right, so how do you feel is an adjective. How does the short film make you feel? These are also adjectives. Like in Chinese, emotions are nouns. Right. Uh, or verbs. But in English, emotions are adjectives and that changes the grammar. OK, so do you have questions about content questions? The key idea is after you move the words, don't add new words at the end. Now, I said that there are three kinds of questions, but if you use social media, you might see another kind of. Not really a question. It ends with a question mark, but it's not a question. For example. This is not a question. This is an expression of surprise disbelief and shock. The question marks are to express emotion. Uh, the person who says this already knows the answer. They're just expressing how hard it is to believe. So building on this logic, sometimes you will use you will see sentences that are not so surprising. But that also end in a question mark. So for example, uh, Somebody may say. How do you know him? And the, if you see an answer like this. He's my husband is not a question. The question mark is saying. Uh, I can't believe you're asking me. It's also an expression of disbelief. So it's like, of course I know him, he's my husband, that kind of idea. Um, 
And then I want to share one more dark secret about questions. The question mark does not have to end a sentence. This is a grammatically correct sentence, even though the question marks appear in the middle. Um, you don't see this very often, but this uh, is still a grammatically correct sentence. So if you see this in like a, an article or something you're reading, this is not a mistake. This is a choice by the author. The question mark does not have to end the sentence. Neither does the exclamation point. This is also correct. Um, again, it's not very common, but you should know that according to proper grammar, this is not actually a mistake. OK, that's the lecture part. Do you have questions about questions? OK, if you don't have questions about questions, I have questions about questions for you to do some questions. This is page eight. Um, so this set of questions gives you the structure, right? Question word, helping verb, subject, main verb, rest of sentence. This is what we were talking about. Subject, main verb, rest of sentence. Uh, it says main verb, which means the last word in the verb phrase. Um, so if there's more than one verb originally, you have to move the first one to the this spot. If there is only one word, you have to add a do word here. Now, what exactly do you use to form these questions? The, the information is given you in line B, right? So A says, A asks the question, and B's answer is, yes, I did. And the information is, I heard the news yesterday. So this is what A is asking. B says yes, which means I heard the news yesterday. A therefore is asking, did you hear the news yesterday? Same for the second one. Yesterday, I heard the news yesterday. So the question is about the time. When did you hear the news? Right, so yes, I did. This is a yes or no question. Yesterday is a time. It's asking when. Um, so there are a few more, 10 more. I'll give you four, yeah, four minutes, and then we'll compare answers.
Number three, Wang Yixuan. What is the question for number three? It's a yes or no question. So the first one, the, the question already blocked for you. So yes or no, we move the first word in the verb phrase to the front. So it begins with is. Is Eric reading today's paper? OK. All right, good. Number four, Huang Shuhui. Yes, uh, what is the question for number four? It's asking about today's paper. What is Eric reading? Good, exactly. It's asking about today's paper, so the question word is a what. And then uh, of the two words in the verb phrase, you move the first one to the front, so this is is, and then the rest of the sentence. Good. Number five, Yao Ziqing. Did you find your wallet? Good. Question, yes or no. So it starts with a do. Past tense. Sorry, past tense. So did. And then it's a question, so it's not I, it's you. Did you. Sorry, uh, this is empty. Did you find, and then the rest of the sentence, your wallet? Good. Number six, Meng Tingxuan. What's the question for number six? Good. Where did you find your wallet? The question is asking about a place. Where, and then you move the first word of the verb phrase. There's only one word, so you add a do. Past tense, did. Uh, I turns into you because it's a question. You, and then find, and then the rest of the sentence. Number seven. Uh, what's the question for number seven? The first word of the answer is because. Right, so what's the question word? OK, why is correct? And the next word? Good, does, present tense, right? Does Mr. Lee, and then walk? to work good. Um, so it, because it's asking why, there's only one word, so you add a do verb, present tense, so it's does, and then the rest of the sentence. Number eight, Zhang Yuqi. Yes, what's the question for number eight? Good. Yes or no? So the question word is blank. First one, walk. Uh, you need to add a do verb. Present tense be, uh, becomes does, does. And then the rest of the sentence, Mr. Lee, walk, not walks, because the present tense is already here. Walk to work. Good. Number nine. Hong Wenxing. Yes, what is the question for number nine?
So it's a yes or no question. So the question word is. OK, can you say that again? OK, very close. You're correct. Uh, yes or no question. The question word is empty. The first word is the first word of the verb phrase, so it is will. Will Ms. Cook return to her office at one o'clock? Don't forget the rest of the sentence. We know we know that Ms. Cook probably will return. The question is, will she come back at one? Number 10. Sanzian. Yes, uh, what is the question of number 10? Good. Uh, at one o'clock is a time, so it's when. And then just like the yes or no question, will Ms. Cook return because the present has been moved to the front. It's uh, the regular form, return to her office. Good. Number 11. The EJ. Yes, what is the question for number 11? Good. Uh, yes or no question. The question word is empty. Uh, the verb is is, so you move the whole thing to the front. Is the orange juice, don't forget the the, the orange juice in the refrigerator. Uh, the person is asking about a specific container of orange juice. And last one, Zhou Yingjing. Zhou Yingjing. Uh, let's try again. Uh, Xu Peizhen. Yes, number 12, what is the question? Good. In the refrigerator is a place you're asking where. Where beaver moves to the front is the orange juice. There is no rest of the sentence. This is blank. All right, let's take a 10 minute break. And when we come back, uh, we will compare answers for page nine.
All right, let's compare answers. Number two, because. So it starts with a why. Why do you, sorry, why are you waiting to see the principal? Right, I'm, so this is a B verb. Why are you waiting? Number three, next Monday morning is a time. So it starts with a when. When do you, st uh, when does Rachel start her new job? Present tense, right? So you add a do verb and it is present tense, it is does. Number four, around six is also a time. So when do you usually leave home for work? Number five, because, so it's a why. Why, and there's already a did verb. So why didn't you get to the meeting? Number six, at many different kinds of stores. This is a place, so where? Where can you, or I guess I, either one is fine. Buy razor blades, T doll. Number seven, next Saturday is a time. So when are you leaving for home? Number eight, in Germany is a place where, past tense, did you study? Chinese. Uh, number eight point two, uh, number eight point two. Because so it's a why, why past tense. Did. You study Chinese in Germany? Good question. And eight point three because so it's a why, why there's already a did verb. Why didn't you go to China to study Chinese? Number nine, next month is asking the time, so it's when. When, present tense, when do you expect to finish this project? And number 10 to Mars is a place, Mars, Huaxing. So where, where will the spaceship go? All right, questions? If it was too fast, tell me I can repeat an answer. OK, before going on to the next page, I want to add two more things. So first we were talking about tag questions, right? These are the most common kinds. But sometimes you will have a shortened, a shortened version of the original sentence. Uh, and it will be in the negative. So. Eh. Sorry, let's take this sentence. So you think Joanna will play the harmonica at your birthday party, but you want to confirm. You can say this. Won't is still present tense. She is the beginning of the original sentence, but to confirm you can use a negative to ask. Um, now, even though the question looks like a negative, this is still a positive question. If you if the answer is yes, then she will. If the answer is no, then she won't. But if the original question is negative. And the similar tag question will be positive. Right, this is positive, this is negative. This is negative, therefore this is positive. 
the answer to this is the same as for any negative question. No means correct, she won't. But if she will and you're wrong, you should say that she will. So like this is a shortened version of uh, this kind of yes or no question, right? Will Joanna play, etc. But you cut off everything after the subject. Uh, and it turns into a confirmation tag question. The other thing I want to add, we talked about how, but I didn't talk about which. Which and what at, as a kind of question. What is asking about something, right? Which is asking about something with options. So if you're looking at the menu and you have no idea, or sorry, the, the waiter has no idea. No, your friend, you're eating at a restaurant with a friend and you're looking at the menu and your friend has no idea what you want. And so your friend might ask you, what do you prefer? What do you want? There are no choices, anything. But if you have discussed the menu together and you're now choosing between two hamburgers and your friend asks, OK. Which hamburger do you want? If there are options, use which. Uh, and if. Both people or if everybody knows what the options are, then you don't even have to say the noun. You can say which of the two or you can even just say which. You use the word which to ask a question. Everybody should already know all of the options. So. Uh, I guess a menu isn't a good example of what like uh, what. Is your favorite color? There are an almost infinite number of colors. If you've ever had to pick a color of paint, you will know that there are an almost endless number of colors. But if today I give you three choices, red, blue, green, and I ask you which color do you like best? There are options, so you should use which. OK, let's get back to the practice. Page 10. Uh, again, using the answer, form a question. There are 10 questions here. Uh, I'll give you another four minutes. Sorry, I should explain. Um, the first one does not have a do verb here because it's the subject. It's asking the first word in the sentence. Uh, so you don't need to change the rest of the sentence. You only have to change the first part. Who, uh, my mother into who, or you can say who into my mother, but you don't have to add another do verb. You can add the word did, and that would be emphasis, 强调. But according to grammar, it is not necessary. So if you are asking about the subject of the sentence, you do not need to add a do verb.
All right, let's check your answers. Number two, a bank robbery. So it should start with what? It's in the object position, so you need a do verb. What did, past tense, right? What did Robert see? Number three, Robert did, so it's asking who. Subject position, you don't need a do verb. Who, you just replace the, the name Robert with the word who. The rest of the sentence is the same. Who got a good look at the bank robber? Question mark. Number four, a toy. So you're asking what? It's in the object position, so you need a do verb. It is in the present tense. What are you making for your brother's children? Number five, Joe is a person. You're asking who. It's in the object position. So you add a do verb. Who does that calculator belong to? Uh, another way to ask this question is to use the word whom. Whom is who in the object position? And to show that it's an object, you have to move the preposition with it. Um, we usually talk about an object as the thing after the verb. But an object can also be the thing after the preposition. Uh, especially after two. So Joe here is the object of this preposition. So to show that whom is the object of a preposition and not the object of a verb, you would move the preposition to the front along with the whom. This concept will come back in eight or nine weeks when we do relative clauses. Number six, a bag of candy. It's asking what? It's in the object position. So what do, present tense, you have in your pocket? Number seven, a mouse, which is what? What object did the cat kill? Number eight, curiosity is in the subject position. So curiosity, uh, sorry, what killed the cat? Number nine, my father is a person. It is in the object position, object of from. So who did you get a letter from? Or from whom did you get a letter? Number 10, my sister is a person, subject position. So simply replace the subject. Who wrote a note on the envelope? Question mark. Number 11, gravity. So it's what? Subject position, so replace gravity with what? What makes an apple fall to the ground from a tree? Question mark. OK, questions about this page? All right, next page. Um, same thing. It, you, it wants you to use what and some kind of do word to create the question. Let's do the first one together. I, the answer is, I think she plans to look for a job in hotel management. So the question is, um, what and do? So 
the what looks like. Well, I guess there's more than one answer, right? Um, I think we, we replace this. What? Hmm. Okay, what does Emily? Okay, yeah, we go. What does Emily plan to do after she graduates? That's not right. It says use the same mod same modal. So what is Emily going to do? OK, OK, I get it. OK, so this set of questions wants you to replace. The rest of the sentence, so verb and object. Uh, replace this long verb phrase with the word do. Like sometimes uh, in English you can replace the we talked about this right in in syntax. There's a substitution test. Right, so you can use. The word do. To replace this entire verb phrase. Do or do so also works. Here it wants us to use do to replace the verb phrase. Uh, so like number one is uh, what it wants us to use what what is Emily going to and then this is do after she graduates question mark. Let's do number two together also. Again, starting with what? What? Can. Can you make 12 copies of the script? OK, what is going on here? Hang on. Why is the answer a question? OK, I think I think uh, maybe they got the question wrong. Right, why else would the answer? Uh, what in the world? <sighs> OK, let's skip this page. You have a lot more homework to do. Let's skip this page. I'll figure it out and I'll tell you guys next week. Page 12. OK, something simpler. Good. Uh, choose which or what to put in the blank. Again, which is when you have choices, use which. When you don't know the choices, use what. Uh, eight, uh, six questions. I'll give you one minute. All right, question three. Chochiwe. 
Is this which or what? Which, good, you have two choices. Which one? Number four, uh, Lin Xuanru. What, good, because there's no choices here. May I help you? Uh, don't know what you want, so it's what. Number five. Yo Zen Hong. Yo Zen Hong. Yes, number five, is it which or what? I think this one is what? There are no choices of language, right? The next one is which, right? Because which of those two? So there's a choice. But the first one, there's no choice, so it should be what? Okay? Okay, so the next one is which? Because it gives you two choices. Number six. Tell me, Xuan. Oh, Tan Xuan Wei, there Tan Xuan Wei. Hmm. Hi, number six. Is it which or what? What? Good. Now, some of you might think it, it's asking about a test score. There are only a limited number of numbers you can answer with. But uh, in this case, the question is asking about the entire range of possibilities. It is not giving you choices. So in the real world, we know that there are only 100 answers. But in the question, the question did not limit uh, the, no, the possible choices. So the answer is what? By the way, the answer to this question is A plus number. I got A 75. Um, because 75 here is not a number, it is a score. So it's like saying, I got a B plus. You need that A before the score. Number seven, Ling Rui Rong. Number seven, which or what? Ling Rui Rong, Zaiman. Okay, Zhang Bo Rong. Also not here. Say anything. Yes, you bring out your Yes, number seven, which or what? Which, good. The question looks like it could be any job, but look at the answer. The one. The is a limiting word. It's saying out of these choices, this one. So using the word the tells us that they are actually talking about a, a few choices only. So this should be which, which job. And then, of course, the rest of the answer says of the three jobs. Finally, number eight, Wei San. Wei San. Oh, Xiao Xiao Dai Zhu Chao Ku. Chen Pei Yu, Chen Yu Pei, Liu Xi. Chen Yu Pei. Liu Zongxiang. Number eight, is this which or what? Good. Again, it looks similar to uh, the one about the score because like, you have a remote control and there's a limited number of buttons. But it's different because already they are talking about the buttons. It's not asking about all of the buttons. It's asking about except for this button out of the rest of the buttons. So there is already a limit in the question. Uh, so the answer is which? Which button? Okay, good. Questions about this page? All right, page 
13. This, lo this looks pretty straightforward. It doesn't look like there's any anything strange here. Uh, so again, form a question using the information in the parentheses. There are 20. What is it? 420? We don't have enough time for this. Ah, OK, hang on. Let's see if we can do page 14 first. Page 14 is also 20 questions. Jesus Christ. What about page 15? OK, page 15 is 18. Page 15 is faster. It's a tag question. Right, so Mr. Adams was born in England and then you want to confirm, so you turn it into a negative, wasn't he? Uh, so add a tag question to the end of each sentence. There are 17 questions. I will give you five minutes. Do you need five minutes? I'll give you three minutes. Remember, the tag question is just a very short version of the yes or no question in the negative.
Okay, question two, Li Zongwei. What is the tag question for number two? So you take the first word in the verb phrase, can, and you make it negative, can't. And then you find a pronoun that fits the subject. Flies is plural, so this should be they. Uh, the tag question is, can't they? Okay. Number three, Shu Ming. Shu Ming. No? Warren Jie. Yes, number three, what is the tag question? Uh, very close. Uh, so, lay is in the present tense, and there is no auxiliary verb, so you have to add a word. You have to add do, uh, and then turn it negative. So this is don't. And then birds is plural, so it should be they. So the answer is don't they. Okay. Okay, good. Number four, Wei Jiaxuan. Wei Jiaxuan. Hmm. Huang Zhu. Huang Zhu. 好，没关系。我星期五写作课，跟大家讲说我有点到他。陈又如 ，Yes. Number four. What is the tag question? Good. Is he? The be verb is the auxiliary verb turned negative to positive, and the pronoun for Mike is he. Good. Number five, Yan Yiting. Hmm. Hong Qianhan. Number five. Wouldn't you? Good. Would is the first word in the verb phrase, turn it negative, and the subject already is a pronoun. So, wouldn't you? Number six, Sun Zihan. Very close. R is correct, but it should be negative. Turn it from positive to negative. And then the subject is gloves. So the pronoun here should be they, aren't they. Okay, okay, good. Number seven, you want to try again, Zihan? The verb is a be verb here. Again, very close. It's a positive, so we turn it into a negative, isn't. And then the pronoun here is actually it, isn't it? Technically speaking, that is, it's a different kind of word. It's not a pure pronoun uh, because it's it's compared to this, right? This is here, that is there. So it's not a pure pronoun. It is always it wherever you are. Number eight, Oyanchi. Mm, not here. What do you want? Zheng Yixi. Li Quan. Uh, Huang Yuyun. Is it Yu? Hmm. Number eight. Can it? Good. This is negative. We turn it into a positive. And fire is it. So fire can't melt a diamond, can it? Number nine. You should call your mom today. Should into shouldn't. And then you. 
Number 10, Ms. Boxlight will be here tomorrow. Will into won't. And Ms. So it's she, won't she? Number 11, Tony Wa lives in Los Angeles. There is no uh, auxiliary verb, so you have to add a do and then negative. Uh, first person present doesn't. He. Number 12, you didn't forget, did you? Number 13, tomorrow isn't, is it? Number 14, I don't, do you? Number 15, this isn't, is it? See, you don't even need the rest of the sentence. Number 16, Jack and Elizabeth were, weren't they? Number 17, Jennifer won't, will she? Number 18, it's the second sentence. It kills, doesn't it? Okay, you have questions about this page? Number 14, thank you. I don't, do I? Good, other questions? Great, let's go back to page 11. I figured this out. So uh, the answer to the first one is right. But here the answer to the second one, right? It says use what and then replace the verb with do. So this is what can I do replace uh, replace this entire part with do to help you get ready for the meeting? And the answer is uh, B is politely asking A, can you do this? So that makes sense. Should I say that again? So the, the entire set of questions wants us to use what to ask a question and then replace the action with do a substitution, thai t. So right, so the first one is uh, look for a job in hotel management. This is the action. And in the answer, it should be do. So what is Emily going to do after she graduates? Second one, uh, the action is make 12 photocopies of this report. We replace this with do. So what can you, sorry, I do to help you get ready for the meeting. Let's do one more. Uh, I ran down the stairs. So what did you do when the fire alarm sounded? Does that make sense? Uh, OK, let's ask somebody to help us with number four. We can think about it together. To Hong Wei. Yes, so what should number four look like? Starting with what? Good. What? Uh, yeah, what should we no. What would you like to do? The verb uh, is actually go. Like to is an is an auxiliary. Hi, is it So what would you like to do after school today? Do you want to try again? Number five.
Yes, what are you doing? Uh, very common question, right? It's like, uh, usually when you see somebody doing something very boring. So, right, what, and then the verb is a be verb, so are, I into you, and then the rest of the sentence is an action. So, what are you doing? Good. Uh, okay, number three more. Uh, well, not not exactly three, right? Like five more. So, number six. How's it going? What? What does Kevin very close? This is present tense first person. We already moved that idea to the does. So this changes to its original form need. What does Kevin need to do? If he wants to pass advanced algebra. Does that make sense? OK, good. Number Seven. Uh, yeah, number seven. Beginning with what? And then this is present tense. So what does Nick do? Yeah, that's it. What what does Nick do? Uh, sorry, here repair is a verb. So what does Nick do? It's asking about his job. Oh, number eight is really fun. Uh, I'll do this one. Uh, I'll lead you to do this one together. Uh, it's about a situation. So, A, did you say something to that man over there? Why does he look angry? B, I accidentally ran into him and stepped on his foot. And then A, what? Past tense. Did he say when you bumped into him? Oh, sorry, what did he do when you bumped into him? What did he do when you bumped into him? And the answer B says, said something nasty. Oh, dear. And then what did you do? Apologized. Then what past tense did he do? Walked away without saying a word. What an unpleasant person. I didn't mean to step on his foot. It was just an accident. So uh, from this last example, you can see that this kind of question is quite common in English. It's just the way that these exercises are written, it makes it a bit more complicated. But when you see these questions in the wild, they should make more sense. Homework. Do all 40 questions on pages 13 and 14. And next week, we are going to talk about negation folding. See you next week.